camera person. Always Appreciate thankful it. for any help. Yes. Second down and 10. Going deep again, Joris. Underneath. Second receiver. That's Brown. Brown complete. Uh, Eric Brown. It's He's in down. Be short. The first down. Looks like about seven yards possibly on the pickup. Ball going to be at 40, the 36. 30. It's hard to tell. <laughs> we'll call it seven yards on the pickup. Third and three. I believe Brownie could have got the first down, but he stumbled there catching the ball and. Uh, Again, I think George may have been looking deep to Conrad and then checked off that receiver and went to Eric Brown in the short on the right. Conrad again split wide right. Second back, and I think he's short of the first down. I believe that may be Wilson. Yes, and that's going to bring up fourth and short. Interesting situation here. Well, you're at the... 34 yard line you know obviously you know go for it situation Stevens and Jones come in Conrad comes out we need one more person to come out now Wilson starts to come out and goes back and Brown comes out so after all that I do believe we have 11 on the field but a double tight end with Kilburn and Stevens power eye in the backfield quick count Wilson gets Wilson. the ball first down first down I may have called that a little quickly. And they're going to take a look at wow. it. Uh, appears not a real generous spot. And we'll I, I see as they take a look. But, you know, our angle is not real good. As the, you know, the ball is on the far hash. And from here, it appears that it will be pretty close. And very close. And Frontier in fact, is celebrating. As you can hear the reaction from both sides, as the home, home side, the Frontier side cheering, and of course from North Central, not real pleased. Not a real popular decision by the crowd here. You know, not a lot of reaction from the sideline, but you know, Frontier has held there, and we'll take over. Here's where we'll have a little bit of trouble keeping track of some numbers. Quarterback is number 21, Schmidt. He'll give to his 11. tailback, Clint Carpenter. He'll have and a he big game. He picks up big gainer. First down across the 45-yard line. 44-yard line. The frontier with some good size across the front line. It's a very big front line, and what you don't want to happen from the North Central standpoint is to see Frontier now drive it down the field and score very quickly. They'll run the three backs in a stacked odd. This time they'll give it to Carpenter, Carpenter again, again on the far side. A couple three yards. Schauber in there along with uh, Stevens. C.J. Stevens on Another the Another number that I didn't see making a immediate contact. Along that front line, we see Adam Jones, Daniel Smithberger, Nate Schauber, Jeremy Kenny, Preston Kilburn. And Full back is Shapley. Number 36 is Shapley. He has a nice gain. It's going to be a couple yards short of the first down, it appears. About three, third and three. He'll pick up about four yards. So a big play now for the Seminole defense on this third and three. Ball resting just inside Monroe Central Territory at the 48-yard line. They'll give it to Carpenter. Carpenter again. He'll be hit and be and very close to the first down. He'll be short by about a yard. We'll flip the situation here, Coach, and see what happens. Fourth down and a yard from the 47. And Frontier has elected to punt the ball away. 
I believe that's number 36, Shapley. The punt, Conrad and Wilson are deep. They'll be back about their own 15-yard line. Good snap, pressure on. A lot of pressure. Short, Conrad on the run. Far side, we get an early flag. This will be a illegal block or a clipping call against Monroe Central. Force the Seminoles to start from very, very deep. So we'll get the call from the officials here, and this is going to put Monroe Central back very deep. Looks like probably going to be near their own 10-yard line to start this possession. They will put the ball down, looks like, just on the 10-yard line. So we'll see if Monroe Central can sustain something after, you know, starting to put together a nice drive. First time they had the ball with three first downs. First down from the 10. Straight, straight ahead. Head, straight up the middle. Gordon. Gordon was the ball carrier. He'll have a couple of yards to the 12. I was just about to say when uh, Frontier kicked the ball that I was a little bit surprised with a fourth and one. You know, with the big guys, I would figure they'd have gone for it, but uh, it turned out well for him here. Not willing to turn things early in the game. George tries to get a Conrad. It is Low. complete. Is it? Oh, okay. He's going to be a couple yards short of the first down. Put the ball at the 19, and about a seven-yard pickup. You complete that short one two or three times. That's that's the stage for the that's deep up. ball. Yes. Third down and about a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Conrad again wide to the left. Second back will be Jones. Jones. First down to the 23-yard line. Some hard running on the right side, picking up the first down with five minutes and 30 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Scoreless first quarter so far. Right side of that line with Tyler Shoemaker, Jeremy Kenny, and Preston Kilburn. Doing a nice job on a couple possessions here early in the game. We're inside five and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter. We're still scoreless. That little birdie once again said going deep. Joris under some, some pressure. pressure. Tries to get outside. Lots of pressure. And will go down. He had Conrad and Jones both downfield, but neither was open. This back to about the 17 or 18 yard line. Loss of about five. You know, always, you know, if you run the ball successfully a couple times, a good play action fake's always a nice play to try to go to, but you know, some pretty good pressure here on that possession at least. And we'll get a quick toss to Brown. He tries to get outside and he cuts has it back. Room. He was hit hit hard. Twenty two, twenty three yard line. Gonna bring up third and seven or eight. Looks like he has the five yards of the, the oh, lot and plus, uh, plus about a yard. It's called third and nine. Now we just really don't have a very good angle here yeah. on lots of things. Joris drops. Wants to throw. Now steps up. Michael Joris will get some yardage, but not nearly not as much as he needed. About four yards, it looks like. About maybe five yards on the play, but uh, it's going to bring a fourth down. Bring Gabe Gordon in to punt this away. Fourth and about five. Gordon in punt formation. Low. Some pressure. Gets it away. It's going to hit and oh. roll. And very close to hitting 
the return man Carpenter, but Carpenter did not. almost made a mistake there. Yeah. And Randy Seifert, as we've seen many times, end of the game snapping on the punt there and is down to, to down the football. Yeah, kind of hit a break there, you know. A low punt it took a scoot, and I thought Carpenter was going to try to scoop it up like a, an infielder, which you don't want to do with a football. Well, he was kind of in between whether to try to catch it on yeah. the fly or let it go. And the danger is that ball takes a funny hop and comes up and gets bounces off your kneecap. You know, it can go anywhere. Not much chance of getting it back. 324 remaining in the first period. We're still scoreless. Second frontier possession. Big guy inside. 40, 36. That would be Shapley. And he's going to have about eight yards on that first down plot. Up to the 36, 37 yard line. Frontiers moved the ball a little bit in the early going. You know, if the Seminoles can shut off their running game, they really don't want to throw the ball all that much. You know, they are only averaging about 50 yards a game passing. Shapley again. He'll have the first down, about four yards, and another Frontier first down. Their second of the game. So a pretty good job moving the ball by Frontier at this time. Zach Fronapple checks in the game in place of Jeremy Kenny. First down. They'll give to Carpenter. Carpenter he tries to cut back, back and he's going to hit very hard. hard. Shoemaker, Gordon, Gabe Gordon, even. Trying to cut back up the middle, and he was met, met hard on, and he picked up possibly three. They call it second and seven at 2.13, remaining in the first quarter. Yeah, he was driven back quite a while. His forward progress was up to the 44-yard line. You know, and when that last substitution was made when, when Fronapple went in for Kenny. I could see Jeremy down here, you know, telling Coach that he was being held. Coach is now, you know, hauling out to the officials about that. We'll see if we can get a call. We may have our first pass here, a little jump pass. No good. A lot of pressure by uh, Aaron Cease. Cease done a neural nice jog getting some pressure on Schmidt. The ball hit off of Carpenter's hands. If he'd been able to make the reception, I think he had some running room on yes. that far side. But that is the first Cougar pass. It goes incomplete. That's going to bring up third, third and down. seven. And normally you would think maybe another passing situation, but you know, a team that doesn't like to throw the ball, they may even look at coming on some type of a sweep. They're going to use two wide receivers. Carpenter wide to the left. And number 10, Crosby here to the right. Looking underneath. Overthrown. Looks Carpenter. like a little miscommunication there. Carpenter, yeah, Carpenter breaking inside. inside. Conrad and Wilson were out there. The ball was well overthrown. Frontier will have to punt. Clock stopped 143 remaining in the quarter. Second punt of the game by the Cougars. Shapley is the kicker. They'll put a couple of people wide to kind of draw some defenders out. Wilson and Conrad deep. Conrad oh, drops the ball. Drops the ball. Wilson picks it up, and then he'll pay the price for the bobble. Number four down to make the play for the Cougars is early. You're doing pretty good at this. You picked now, up these numbers. I picked You're up good. a couple early, earlier there. I think number four is down there. That's early is his name, not, not the fact he was down there quickly. So the third possession now from Monroe Central will start at about their own 32. And I hope I'm within at least five to 10 yards of that line, yard line call. You're close, you're close. Well, if we can find the 50 right in front of us, yeah. we can always count yeah. back. I even have trouble doing that. A little delay. Gordon, mm -hmm. this is Gordon. outside. He can't get past number 36, which is well, what looked like a, a, a nice game shut off pretty quickly there, and that's going to be four yards, which isn't bad, but you know, wasn't quite as good as what it looked. So 
second down and we'll call it six now at the 36 yard line. Joris wants to throw. Under some pressure. Again, a lot of pressure. Going to step away. outside. Gets a nice block. Out of bounds. First, first down, I believe. A nice scramble by Michael Joris. He'll get the six yards he needed for a first down, plus a couple more. Nice block thrown over there to free him up to get the first down. But a lot of pressure as he drops back and trying to get that pass off. And he had somebody across the middle there. It may have been Stevens. I really couldn't tell for sure. But just not a lot of time to, to look for if it. You can't see him, yeah. Conrad again wide left. George going to come this way, and it's tipped. Knocked away, 76. That's Rory Crow. You know, the Crow name's been you know, uh, pretty common down here for a long yes time. His brother Ricky Crow was an outstanding athlete in all three sports, and Rory's just a junior and a fine player in his own right. But uh, he got his big paws up there and knocked that ball away. It was intended for Conrad. Second and 10, 46 seconds left in the period. Joris is now three of five passing for 20 yards. Second and 10. Backs in the eye. They'll give it to Jones. Mm. He'll be hit. And he may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they may give him forward progress there to about the 44-yard line. Pickup of about a yard. Jones will come out. Wilson back in. 20 seconds remaining in this quarter. We may get a playoff here. I think the Seminoles will have plenty of time to get this playoff. I'm not sure if they really had to or not, but they're going to go up there and get one off here very quickly. George wants to throw. And a very dangerous throw intended for Wilson. A couple of defenders there, including Schmidt and Shapley. And we still have five seconds left in the quarter. Seminoles once again showing the, the no hesitation in going up top and, and throwing the ball. So fourth down we'll find Gordon in punt formation, fourth and nine. Carpenter will go deep for the Cougars. Kicks away, it's deflected at the line. And it's caught by one of the up backs. And that's a very dangerous play and not really a very good play by the up back for Frontier because if that ball bounces off of him, it's free. You know, their fans are cheering, but you know, they got away with a mistake, you know, that. And we still have a tenth very of a second on the clock. a tenth of a second. But the ball was deflected at the line, and once it goes past the line of scrimmage, you know, it's just like it was not deflected. So really not a good play by the Frontier back. I'd say they got very lucky there. That's excellent field position by Frontier at their own 48-yard line. They'll give it to Shapley. He'll be hit at the line, but then, you know, be strong enough to fall forward and get some yardage. He'll have about three yards as we've reached the end of period number one. Monroe Central zero and Frontier zero. Woodsfield Marathon sells pure gasoline, diesel fuel, kerosene, and now you can get your hunting license there, too. Back to period number two, we're at Frontier High School, Monroe Central Seminoles, and Frontier Cougars. A scoreless first quarter, period number two. Quarterback Schmidt with a fake, and tries to go to a short back early. Jones was right there. Incomplete, third down, and eight. You know, the Cougars had some success running the ball there, 38 yards in the first half, averaging you know, almost five yards a carry, but you know, it's you know, kind of strange maybe that they would go away from the run here a couple times for the pass. Exactly. But you know, once you've run the ball successfully, you know, you know, play action pass, a lot of times it's a big game. It's a lot of times open, so we'll, we'll third see down. Here. They'll give Hand the ball off. to Carpenter, Shoemaker, and others. 
Randy Seifert was through on the left side and maybe forced Carpenter to bounce outside a little more than he wanted to. And then Smithberger and Schauber and Shoemaker all right there to, to finish up uh, a short gain of maybe a half a yard, but Frontier will be forced to kick. Yeah, they're going to have to kick this way again. 11-28, remaining in the half. Wilson and Conrad once again deep. And he whiffed the kick, and the ball is loose, and it'll be Monroe Central's ball. It looked like the pressure huh. may have forced him to change his, his drop, and I think he just dropped it. I think he just missed. dropped it. So that's going to give Monroe Central excellent field position. That play is going to lose five or about six yards. So I think he just went to kick it and missed it. I'll be interested to see that on the replay. But we're in business here at... Uh, what are we calling that? 45 yard line. That's not really a turnover, but it's the same thing as one. Now Monroe Central has to take advantage of it now on this first down from the 46. Straight ahead, Jones. Jones. Adam Jones has five, six, maybe closer to seven yards on first down. Nothing fancy, just power of football. That's the most basic play in football, that straight dive just behind the left side of your line. Again, a late change as Wilson is in for Brown on the play. Ball now to 38-yard line. Second down and three. Jones comes in motion. Dive to the other side. Wilson changes Wilson. direction. He's going to be near the 35. Cheering from the far side. I believe the ball probably came loose. But the play was blown dead. Wilson looked like he had some room, and he was hit hard there. I couldn't see the number, possible number 60. It is a first down. Wilson has really impressed me with the moves that he's able to make as he goes into the hole. A very good runner for such a small, small player. We know Central now has six first downs, which is a, a good total here, only two minutes into the second quarter, but not enough yards, and more importantly, no points to show for it yet slot to the left. Wilson comes in motion. Joris will sprint this way. He's going to keep. Big gain, Michael Joris. Five yards. Maybe closer to six. An option, kind of a slow developing option, but it was very effective. They'll put him down. It's about the 30-yard line. Talking to coach, getting the play. 65. Early, I believe it. Is that? No, 65. Give me a name. Give me a name. Smith. Don't know any of the, don't know any of the linemen. Second and four. Hand off Jones. Adam Jones was hit by number 60 in the backfield. Adam was able to fall forward and get a couple of yards. Bring up third and about two. Mike came out of that play a little bit gimpy as he walked around. A little bit of a limp looks like on his left ankle. That's a danger you know, when you run the option. And if your quarterback gets banged up a little bit, but you know, Michael George after the opening sack has four carries for 14 yards. Third and two. Pass. Complete. Conrad sidesteps one. Catch back, back to another. Adam Conrad in the end zone. Touchdown. <laughs> Somewhere near 30 yards. I didn't see that at all, but I think that was a beautiful play. Adam Conrad creating after he caught the ball and getting it in the end zone, not to be denied. So a very good move, though. We'll call that 30 yards and a touchdown. Yoho on to kick the extra point. Conrad will now hold. Snap is down. Kick is up. And, and it's, it's good. good. So, 8 minutes, 41 seconds left. And the first half, the North Central, 7, Frontier nothing.
there's a chance to look at the cheerleaders on the sideline. I hope we don't get a lot of plays on the, on this near sideline because not a lot of room for the young ladies to get out of the way. This no, there is very, very close. So, touchdown pass from Joris to Conrad, 30 yards, and Monroe Central now has a 7-0 lead. That is Conrad's third catch for 43 yards here in the early going. Adam Jones to kick off. It's a high, short kick. Schmidt, he'll come right up the middle and be hit and dropped by the kicker, Adam, Adam Jones. Thirty-seven yard line is where Frontier will take over. You know, as a, on this year, you know, Frontier has really also struggled offensively. They've scored only fifty points in eight games this year. Seminoles have scored just seventy-five. So hopefully the Seminole defense can continue to play as solid as they have, you know, most weeks this year. And you know, this is a, a chance uh, holding Frontier down and possibly even a shutout. Schmidt. They had lots of trouble off. with. There's a whole lot of white shirts over there. I see they Smith may have Berger. given him a yard. And along with Smithberger, we see Seifert. Give the quarterback one yard, second nine. Their quarterback, Schmidt, is their leading rusher with about 500 yards for the year, but I think a lot of that came earlier in the year when he was playing running back and was just shipped to the quarterback partway through the year. Second and nine. Again, the three backs, they'll give it to Shapley, and he forces him to way forward for some nice yardage up near the 43-yard line. It's going to bring up third and three. About six yards. Shapley, a pretty good sized young man. As you can see, the shot of the Frontier huddle there, you know, they are very, very big across the front line. They have a definite size advantage yeah. over the Monroe Central defensive front. They always seem to be big down here. It's Shapley again. Again. And the, he stopped in the it's middle. Be short, depending on the spot. And we'll see. There, I see Cease comes in from the defensive end and gets on top of that pile. And in the middle. Adam Jones also Four. there, and he'll get a very nice spot and get the first down. Pretty good spot on the uh, Cougar advancements there. I would have, I would have swore we'd had it, had it stopped. Seven oh three, first down. And from here also, it almost looks like that back, the second back in the stacked dot, is moving ahead of the snap. Short of the sneak and get three or four yards. They'll put it just across the 50-yard line. Second down and six. Kilburn back in defensively for Cease. Looks like Aaron may be holding his left arm a little bit as he comes out. They'll give to the fullback once again. He's going to muscle Lots ahead room. and have another first down. Almost 10 yards. As he just blew through the line. T.J. Stevens there with an arm on him. You see another defensive change for the Seminoles as they try to, some different combinations to get somebody to hold their ground in there against this large offensive front of the Cougars. But there's another first down. Four front Four first downs for Frontier. They're driving as they're now at their Monroe Central 40-yard line. Shapley Second once again. Through. He'll get submarined by some different people. Looks like Seifert's there along with Wilson, but around the ankles, I believe, was Shoemaker. But his forward progress picking up a nice four yards. 
Shapley quite a workhorse so far with nine carries. And we are just past the midway point in period number two. Seven nothing Monroe Central. Second down and six. The sneak, sneak again, again. Just in behind a First big down. center and a big gain. About seven yards and another frontier first down. And that's very close, and it is a first down. You know, this is not what you'd like to see after scoring a touchdown. You see the Cougars come back and put together a, a nice drive and all on the ground. As we said earlier, they've moved it well on the ground, and you know, they've done us a favor by throwing a couple times. Again, quarterback. Nowhere to go this time. Well, this time, the center of that line does a lot better job. And there's Shoemaker up off that pile, along with some others. And I get a guess that Daniel Smithberger would also be part of that. Forward progress will give him maybe a yard. Now, after making that type of a stop and putting the Cougars in a second down and nine, you, know, you may have forced them now to do what they really don't want to do, and that is throw the ball. They'll go right back to Shapley. But this time, he has Tyler Shoemaker around the ankles as he falls forward. Jeremy Kenny and Daniel Smithberger help finish him off. He's just short of the 25, caught the 26-yard line. Pickup of a couple, third and seven. 4-14 remaining in the first half. Again, though, 26-yard line. Cougars with two chances to make yes. the seven yards that they need. They come back to this left side. And again, Shoemaker, Kenny, and Smithberger. As they pick up a little over half of the distance to the first down. Fourth down at the 23, almost the 22-yard line. Fourth down and about three. Big defensive stand here. A good play here might be the fake to the Beat big up. fullback, Shapley, and the quarterback to keep around one of the ends. We'll see how Frontier coach Russ Morris chooses to play it. Fourth and three. They'll fake and give it to Carpenter. Carpenter He'll be hit. And be short of the first down. Looks like Daniel Smithberger making that play after a pickup of a yard and the Seminole defense has held. Good play by Smithberger. A very good play as they went away from what you kind of expected them. You're looking for the big workhorse or the quarterback sneak. And uh, they go back to number 11 Carpenter. But still they had to figure that, that the Seminoles would be keying on the fullback, number 36 Shapley. So you know, fake to him and give it to the other back to the other side. But Smithberger was able to make the play. So now it's 3.10 left in the first half. Seminoles take over on their own 21-yard line. This is Wilson. Wilson. He has a big, big yard. Game. First down plus up to the 36-7-yard line. First down, Wilson. From the 21, that's a pickup of about 16 yards by Christopher Wilson, and another first down. So you kind of get yourself out of trouble now, clock inside three minutes. Another game like that, and you look for the Seminoles to try to go downfield. Again, Again Brown. Brownie. Eric Brown with maybe four yards. Ball right on the 40-yard line. Second and six, two minutes, 30 seconds. A lot of time left here, as you say, two minutes, thirty. Time. And, and Monroe Central with all three timeouts left. We have Conrad coming to this side. Joris will drop. He'll look that way. There goes Conrad deep. And just overthrown. It was there. You know, a good pattern and a good throw, but, you know, the timing just a little bit off. We have a jacket again. 
in our tight quarters shots yeah. to the shots <laughs> to this near sideline to the right yeah, you, know, you, we, you may get uh, you may get uh, you know some other back of the, head, the field <laughs> Well, you know, that, you know, a good call there, Conrad. But the defensive back bit on that on that pump fake and went deep, and he was there. But Joris just not able to make connections. Now, that's a tougher throw than what some people think, and something that you can expect the coaches to go back to at a later time. Third and six now, 2:13 before halftime. Joris will toss it to Wilson, left side, runs into his own blocker, cuts Trust back, it back, gets the first down, down across midfield. Wilson kind of running into his own blocker on the far side. And it is a first down. Christopher Wilson will get 11 yards. Christopher Wilson again coming through. And we still got 205. You know, in plays like that, Coach Bates used to say either block or get out of the way. <laughs> so another nice gain and another first down for Monroe Central just across midfield. George wants to throw across the middle. Across the middle, no good. In and out of the hands. Just of a Brown. little high, but you know, again, a, you know, good call right there. As again, you know, maybe hedging out a little bit on Conrad Brown from his slot. You know, slips into that zone in the middle there, but not able to make the reception. 150 remaining before halftime. Probably was a catchable ball, but it would have been a, a super catch. Conrad again. and Jones coming out. Uh, no Central, uh, I believe, with all three timeouts remaining. Ball resting right on the 50-yard line. I think that incomplete pass, I believe we lost about a half a yard on the spot. Wilson tries to get outside. Cougars string it out, but now Wilson gets out of bounds. And Sideline. still getting yardage. It looked like Christopher Wilson was going to go out of bounds. Just a little, little along it looks the like he did there. step out of bounds right near the first down marker. And that's going to be very close. So they'll reset the chains. Yeah, it's and it is a first, first down. down. Exactly 10 yards on the pickup. But Christopher doing an outstanding job trying to, to tight rope it down the sideline. Well, he didn't get much more than the, the chalk dust on that sideline. But the, the third big game by Wilson on this possession. Now he would have 37 yards on, on this possession. 140, and he did go out of bounds. They'll go uh, fake, and will or going deep. Conrad, incomplete. Number 11, Carpenter, right the there with him. Hung up in the air for quite a while, and Carpenter able to make the play. And as a matter of fact, Joe Conrad may have turned into defensive back yeah. to prevent an interception. One thirty-three. Again, the ball at the 40-yard line. Possibly look for something again here at 133. Conrad on the far side. George again looking. Throwing back Man underneath. to Stevens as they bring the play to the right and send Stevens on a crossing pattern to the left. And they're just off his hands. Third and ten. Again, possibly a ball that could have been caught underneath a little bit hard. 128. You know, it is a cool night. You know, it is a little damp, you know, in the air here. You know, probably the ball getting a little wet. But, um, you know, still, you know, you know, there's been a couple balls here that you'd like to see caught. But, you know, you know, and again, you know, you know again, you know, Michael really putting a lot of, a lot of yeah. smoke on that ball that, you know, maybe those shorter balls need to be, you know, a little more touch. Wilson pitching. Getting it outside. He takes the tackle. Back. He'll have a first down. Be very close to out of bounds. We'll see where they place it. First down there. They'll put it at the 22-yard line. Yeah, 22. So that's 18 yards by Wilson. Clock starting, so evidently he's not out of bounds at 115. Four good pickups on this drive by Wilson. The ball at the 22-yard line. They'll go Jones sweeping the other side, getting outside. He'll be pulled down about the 15-yard line. And Minot 
Central will spend a timeout with 55 seconds left. They'll put the ball to 15, so seven yards by Jones. Still uh, 55 seconds left in Monroe Central, two more timeouts. So, you know, plenty of time here to do a variety of things. You know, about a second and somewhere around second and three. You know, ball just across the 15-yard line. You can throw to the end zone. And some nice yardage on the sweeps, you know, on this possession. You know, again, um, you know, Christopher Wilson has 55 yards. You know, so far it's covered about... Um, trying to do some quick math here. It was about the 20, 21 yard line. We're now at the 15. So that's uh, about 65 yards so far. You know, and about 55 of it, something like that, has been covered by Wilson. Seminoles back to the side. Maybe we can see better, Dale, if we just read this one off the monitor. Yeah. Well, if we come to this side, we could be hurting, so we apologize. But the ball just inside the 15. Straight up Jones, Jones, Jones. big hole. Down plus. Again, the timing didn't look real good there. It looked like George had to reach a little bit extra there. The ball at the inside the five at about the three. 49 seconds. George wants to throw. Ball. It's, it's deflected. Gabe Gordon. Gordon will get it, and Gabe Gordon is very close to the goal line. A flag down. Could be a face And we've match. got a flag. Uh, <laughs> the screen went black. <laughs> Let me... That's going to put the ball down about the one with a penalty upcoming here. The ball either slipping out of George's hands or being deflected. Gordon will get credit for the reception and about a two-yard pickup. The ball will be just short of the goal line. It's about the length of a foot. But that was an interesting play. Gabe Gordon balls up in the air, and he almost thought the freshman out. was going to the end zone. I did. Joris will give it to Wilson, Touchdown. I believe. Behind the left side of the line, touchdown for Christopher Wilson. Christopher Wilson. yard run. 32.9 seconds. 13 to nothing for the Knowles. Well, very fittingly to get that touchdown for Christopher Wilson, who did outstanding Just work on job. that yes. on the, the drive there. So he earned that touchdown. Chris Yoho kicks the extra point. Conrad Holden. This one will be wide to the left. No good. But with 32 seconds left from the first half, the North Central puts together a, a nice drive and takes it in and the score now reads for no central 13 frontier nothing i believe that touchdown will be the sixth touchdown of the year for christopher wilson and the earlier touchdown by adam conrad would be his fourth touchdown it was interesting to look at some statistics in some of the papers. You know, on Thursday night, the Times Leader has some stats. Friday morning's Wheeling Intelligencer. Thursday night's uh, Marriott Times. And, and, you know, I know Coach sends the information and faxes stats to those papers every week. And it seems like all three papers have, have different numbers at times you know, on that. So I'm not sure how they can, you know, get some of that information. But... I guess the only numbers that are real important at this point in time is 13 nothing Seminoles. That's right. We are very near the end of the first half. Adam Jones for the second time tonight will kick off. Frontier has some timeouts remaining also. A good kick by Jones. 
down near the 11 yard line. This is Schmidt. He'll be Ooh. hit hard by Wilson. Wilson. Just about the 30 yard line. Pretty good lick put on there by Christopher Wilson. I should say. That's the 31 yard line. 27 seconds remaining here in the first half. Again, you know, Frontier, as we've mentioned a couple times previously, not a throwing team. Matter of fact, they've only attempted three passes tonight. All have been incomplete. They'll loosen up a little bit in the secondary here. Conrad will drop back a couple extra steps at his free safety position. Number 10, Crosby goes wide right. Brown on him. They'll toss sweep for Carpenter. They have very little running room on the far side. Strong out. Shoemaker, Wilson, and Smithberger, Smithberger also with some pursuit. Adam Jones, the defensive end on that side, also believe. Doing a nice job. Carpenter will get a couple of yards, but Frontier will choose not to run another play. Halftime from Frontier High School. Score reads the North Central 13, Frontier nothing. A good football team works together, helping each other to do their best. A good... third period about to get underway the Cougars will receive the kick to start the third quarter Monroe Central leading 13 nothing just a quick look at the stats there the first half Monroe Central is going to be around 100 yards more total offense than the, the Cougars the Frontier getting no yardage passing everything on the ground a uh, nice contribution of the ground game from both Christopher Wilson and Adam Jones the big 30 yard touchdown pass to uh, Adam Conrad early in the second quarter then a drive spearheaded by Wilson in the late in the second quarter, which he scored a touchdown. Chris Yoho with one of two kicking, so the Seminoles leading 13-0. And we don't want anybody turning away here now, you know, turning over to uh, Channel 9 to watch the Buckeyes or over to Channel 7 to watch the Mountaineers or anything. You know, everybody stay with us here for the second half. Yeah, because we've got an exciting half of football. The defense doing enough to keep the, the Cougars in check. Well, the Cougars, Cougars did start to move the ball a couple yes, times. They did. did a good stand there about the 20-yard line there uh, toward the end of the second period. And then the Seminoles going about 79 yards then on a nice drive after that to score. That's what you have to do when your defense steps up and makes the plays and, and stops them. You'd like to be able to go back and get some points. Um, maybe we shouldn't say anything here, but no turnovers in the first half and very few penalties. Adam Jones will kick. Seminoles try that... Uh, one onside kick last week where the, they stayed in the middle and everybody ran forward, but, you know, 13-0 lead, I don't think that's a possibility. Adam Jones, line drive, kick right to early, about the 12. Up the middle, and there's the kicker, Here's Adam Jones, Jones, once again. I guess the kicker knows what direction the ball's going, so, you know, Adam down the field Just very quickly. To it. That's a couple times tonight we've seen Jones down to make the play, and not only make the tackle, but making a very solid tackle pretty much unrestricted that time straight to the ball carrier looks like 25 yard line will call it for the Cougars and anytime you can get coverage in high school football to make the other team start about the 25 yard line you've done a nice job they'll go right back to their big fullback Shapley he'll meet with several Seminoles Jeremy Kenny I think had an early piece of that and then others We see him unpile there, and as usual, Shoemaker. Aaron Cease also up. But that was Benninger, and he'll get a couple of yards. Make that Shapley was the ball carrier. This may be Carpenter. I see Seifert and defensive end on that side. Probably Jones would be there. See TJ Stevens also coming in. A very short gain of maybe a yard. Third and about seven. A situation Frontier really doesn't want to be in. Probably a pass. 
Schmidt will drop. A lot of pressure. Cease had some pressure from the backside, as you said. Dale Cease tried to get number 24. That is uh, Kayser. Incomplete. Opportunity defense coming out. First possession in the third quarter. Forcing Frontier to go three plays and now punt it away. Shapley, the fullback, will be back to kick with Wilson and Conrad deep. It's a low snap on the short hop. Pressure from Cease and others. Wilson catches it on the 40-yard line. Gets outside, running room. Be brought down by number nine. nine. Right in front of us here at the 44-yard line. But a good return. And I don't know, you may even be able to pick up, you know, prior to that kick. I'm not sure how well we can pick up some of the stuff from the sideline. You know, Coach Sacosta down there telling the back there, make sure you catch it in the air. And you know, as a matter of fact, they did such a good job of that that the two of them almost ran together. But Wilson able to get a nice return, about 16, 17 yards to the 43-yard line in Frontier Territory. And boy, it sure would be nice to be able to take this opening possession another, in the third yeah. quarter down and get another one and then be able to, to finally relax a little bit. Joris will toss left side. Jones. Jones. Lots of room. Still on his feet, still moving. Adam Jones, a big run. Have a first down. He's going to be inside the 30 yard line. Looks like we're going to put him about the 28. 15 yards for Jones and first down. Jones and Brown will come out for this series. Pitch this time, Wilson. Wilson around the right side again. Big running room. Slipping. Cuts back. Keeps his feet down near the 15-yard line. And Christopher Wilson's going to be very near another first down. And there's a signal. It is about 11 yards by Christopher Wilson. So sweep left and sweep right. Christopher Wilson now over 70 yards. And I have Monroe Central for 14 first downs. Straight up the middle, Jones. He'll be hit a couple of three. Very near the line, number 60, who's been in a lot of plays, making that play just inside the 15. A yard. They'll put the ball just right at the 15-yard line. Second and nine. Combined now, Christopher Wilson, Adam Jones, uh, up around 125 yards rushing. Second down and about nine. Going to go for the big play here on a pass. Wilson, or fake, Tip. and ball is tipped. Look for Kilburn, I believe. Need to get a little bit of air under that, but it was incomplete. Joris was 5 of 12 the first half for about 52 yards. Conrad getting three of those catches for 43 yards and one touchdown. Third down and eight. Just Jones may have been closer to two yards on the previous carry. Again, two opportunities here on third down to make the yardage if need be. Ball to 15-yard line. Brown in motion. Sweep. It's been a good play to Wilson. A little trouble with the handle, but he's going to try to cut back and will fight very hard just to get back to the line of scrimmage. You know, not a clean pitch not there. At all. He, you know, whether the pitch wasn't exactly where he wanted it or just mishandled, but you know, very little gain by Wilson. Fourth and eight. <laughs> and what started as a promising drive with a couple of first downs has now slowed, and you will need to convert on this fourth down. We'll see George in the shotgun. Three receivers to the left. George will look that way. It'll be complete. At the line of scrimmage to Jones, I believe, but Frontier will snuff that play out in a hurry and take over on down. Matter of fact, the play will lose a couple of yards. 
the Frontier will take over. What looked like a nice series, you know, turned sour. And we're going to give the ball up. 8-18, third quarter. Looks like the ball is just about on the 18-yard line. That play will lose about three yards. Frontier, everything's been on the ground thus far, and they'll go on a keeper. The quarterback is Schmidt. He'll be cut down that far right side. Smithberger, who has been in on several plays, among others on that play. Possibly Jones on the far side. A yard, maybe. Second and nine. And this would be a good place to force the game's first turnover. This is the area on the field you'd like to get that. They'll give to Straight the fullback. The and he'll be submarined at the legs by, looks like Shoemaker, Tyler Shoemaker. He'll be to the 20 yard line, pick up of maybe a maybe another a yard. yard. They call it third and eight. I hold couple, here, we should get the ball back in pretty decent field position. After a couple of nice runs by Shapley, the fullback earlier, he's been held in check pretty well the last several times. Third and eight. Schmidt wants to throw, throw. deep. He'll get that's a completion. A and that's probably good enough for a first down on the far side. The first frontier completion of the night. Ten yard pickup and first down. The Frontier trying to work their way out of trouble. The ball now at the 30 yard line. They'll go in the option to Carpenter. He'll get a nice block, has good speed, and get out of bounds. Driven out of bounds by Wilson, but not before getting a nice pickup of about 12 yards and, and another, another first Frontier down. first down. After looking like they were going to stall Frontier offense, putting a, a couple nice plays together. We picked up a nice block downfield, which helped him out, and Carpenter has pretty good speed. But there's another first down. They'll fake and be a pass. Underneath. Pressure from, excellent pressure from Seifert, who made the big hit, but the ball is going to be complete to the fullback, Shapley. Good pick up Randy Seifert really put a big hit on the quarterback. Possibly six. But the second straight completion. Just a pass on the underneath there to number 36. Pretty good coverage. Second down, four yards, six, just under six minutes remaining in the third quarter, Coach. But you need to step up here now, second and four, as they'll go right back to Shapley. Again, Shoemaker. Looks like Tyler Shoemaker's lived all night at the ankles of the fullback Shapley. He'll get a couple of yards, maybe three, and bring up third and one. And this would be a situation you would almost expect to see the number 36, 36. Shapley once again. He'll be the second of the three backs and the stacked eye behind the quarterback. But don't be surprised to possibly see the quarterback on a sneak either. There he goes. There is Shapley. And He's he going to fall forward, get about three yards in the first down. Place the ball right on the 45-yard line. You know, you really don't want to see Frontier go down and score and make this a one-touchdown game because no. we've been that road way too many times here recently. We really needed to come out and get a score ourselves. And it looked like we were headed in that direction. Things stalling on us. 
Ball just shy of the 45-yard line in the North Central Territory. Five minutes remaining, third period. Schmidt wants like the pass. Play. He's going, going deep, deep for the big play. Incomplete. Oh, Carpenter yes. almost made a circus catch. Brown was the defender from the North Central, and very nearly a great catch by Clint Carpenter. And really yeah, not, a, not a badly thrown ball for a team no, it that doesn't throw the ball a lot. Almost looked like something out of our playbook. That's a lot of success on the ground, and you go for the play action pass. Everybody says, why pass after you run? But, you know, if you stop and look, you get a lot of big gains that way. Doesn't work for Frontier, fortunately for the Seminoles. Second and ten. They'll go second back. Carpenter, Carpenter. has a lot of room to the outside. Wilson, Wilson has a shirt tail and will pull him down. But a nice pickup for Carpenter. About seven, seven. yards. It looked like there wasn't many white shirts over on that side as Carpenter went out there. Finally, Wilson and Conrad able to, to make the play. Third down and two. Shapley, Shapley. another first down, I believe. Yes. We'll see where the spot is, but it looks like it's across the the yard line and that will be good enough for a first down yeah the signal there by the head official first down so Cougar is still on the march TJ Stevens making a nice hit but just not soon enough Shapley's definitely been the workhorse I have him for 16 carries so far in the game this is where the signal defense needs to get tough again Ball on the 35-yard line. Faking. Looking Schmidt has to underneath. throw and overthrows Long. his receiver, number four, number four, Irwin. Wide open. But again, a well, a well faked play and had a man open, but just not on the money. And Early had lots of running room if he had received that ball. I believe Early is coming from the tight end position, that time on the right side. And you know, you know, after getting some success with the tailback Carpenter, you know, they faked to him, and really, as you said, he had some running room, looked like, but the pass was just a little just high. A little high. Cougars are now two for nine passing the ball. Second down and 10, 35-yard line. They'll give to Shapley. He'll be tripped up this time by Gordon. He'll have about four yards near the 30-yard line. Close, close to five. Probably call it third and five. Again, two chances for Frontier to make the needed five yards. Simmons could come up and make a play here. Aaron Cease is nose guard on this possession. And he'll be oh, backed up. A much better job, Jeremy Kenny. We've got a flag. And flag others. thrown in late. We'll see what the holding the position now, what the flag is. It's, you know, we've had very few flags. And I did not see the flag come in. It was thrown in late. And usually that's it's not a good sign no. for the defense. But we'll see as the officials discuss this. Five-yard face, face mask mask. penalty against Monroe Central. Wow. Again, this year you're allowed, the, the face mask penalty can be five or 15, so the yard gain on the play plus five probably is going to give them a first down. And Coach Sacosta very unhappy, and I think the, the unhappiness of the call is, is where the flag came from. Yes. But that will give Frontier a first down now at the 25-yard line. So after a great defensive play, you know, a uh, 
it looked flag, like, as it always does. You know, really stacked up in the middle real well. As I pointed out before that last play, I, you know, Aaron Cease now at the nose guard position. We've seen a lot of him at the defensive, defensive end spot. End. Probably maybe get a little quickness to, you know, guess right and get in a hole and make a play in the backfield. They'll give it to the up back early. His first carry of the night. Short game. And it looks like that's a very difficult play to run from the uh, back. It's only a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage to find a hole. And he's up very slow. Now gets up with a hand from Adam Jones. Couple yards, second and eight. But that is the first carry by number four, who's the, the front blocking back. Everything else has been by number 36 and number 11, the fullback Shapley and the tailback Carpenter. Second down and call it nine. Second back Third is man. Carpenter. He'll try to sprint to the outside, break a tackle, break another tackle before Cease finally drops him down. Probably another first down. Inside the 15, near the 12. Most definitely the best drive the Cougars have put together tonight is they're now at the about the 12 yard line knocking at the door clock running 155 remaining in the third quarter they'll give the Shapley a guy. No surprise he'll be submarine to the ground but falls forward for about three yards Seifert along with Shoemaker, Shoemaker. Near the eight. Maybe our hope is that this fullback Shapley will start to get a little tired. <laughs> he's had Hopefully quite a workout. Hopefully he gets tired before we do. But the ball at the eight yard line now. Third down and seven. The Cougars can get a first down at about the one. Shapley again. Shapley, big hole. He's near the three. Now they'll put him down, knee hitting back closer to the five. But another three yards. Be a good time for him to lay it on the ground down here. A drive that looked like it was stalled there, Coach. You know, and the penalty, of course, as it always does, <clears throat> giving them new life and uh, really creating havoc for us. Ball just inside the five-yard line. Third down and about two. Thirty seconds remaining in the quarter. Shapley again. again. He'll be stacked up. up. Cease, Kenny. Don't believe they're going to give him anything. Linebackers, Shoemaker and Stevens. It's going to take us to the end of the quarter, I believe. Pick up very little yardage, and we will be to the end of period number three. And we're at the same place as we were at halftime. Monroe Central, 13, Frontier nothing. Monroe County Court Judge James. About to get underway with maybe the key play of the game. Cougars fourth down and two from the four yard line. Fake. Go to the end zone. Incomplete. Incomplete. Deflected. Adam Jones, I believe, making the deflection on the pass intended for Carpenter. Cougars going to the air after so much success on the ground and I guess you say thank you very much. Thank you, yes. <laughs> but I believe Adam Jones I reading the play, getting I... out there and deflecting the ball intended for Carpenter. If the ball is thrown with a little more loft on it, I, I don't think Adam is able to make the play, but credit a big defensive play to Adam Jones. Seminoles now possession, still leading 13-0 on their own four-yard line. And now if they can control the ball. some offense, yes. And no mistakes. And there's one. There's on one movement. right there. It's only going to cost you a couple of yards, but in this position right. on the field, two yards are crucial. <laughs> only, by my count, just three penalties on Monroe Central. That two-yard step off for false start will be 12 yards in penalties and I think that's one that everybody saw 
and from this position on the field you want to make sure you don't make a mistake so I would look at a very simple run right up the middle probably contact made near the line of scrimmage I think Christopher Wilson, Wilson was the carrier and I see, believe he has nothing as the ball looks like it's still just short of the three not a position that you want to give the ball up from here but if the Seminoles should be forced to punt remember earlier in the game they did deflect the Monroe Central punt second, second man back through outside here we go, Christopher Wilson. Running Another room out of bounds. Job, Christopher Wilson. Sometimes you worry about going to a some type of a sweep or outside play. If somebody gets penetration, can get you in the end zone. But Wilson, with good speed, he's going to be out past the 20 to the near the 23, 20-yard 20 pickup. Wilson producing again and he does a super job and he's up there once again very near that career high he was 87 yards I believe at Shenandoah he's up in that same area now but another a big first down and another and false another. start defense is allowed to move as long as they do not get into the neutral zone and I think that's the case it's going to cost false the start. Seminoles five yards You know, penalties that you cannot have when you're trying to protect the lead. You know, over anxiousness, maybe a signal that the play is coming that way and you're trying to get out there to make that block, but you've got to be sure. So first and 15 as we go back to the, about the 18 yard line. Jones in motion, they'll toss to Wilson again. Christopher Wilson gets outside again, gets the five yards of the penalty back. Big number 36 there to meet him, along with a couple other blue jerseys. It'll be second down and about 10. Now our vantage point, of course, is a lot farther away than the statistics people down the sideline. And I have Christopher Wilson now at 98 yards for the game. Yeah, but they've got a little better view, so sometimes my numbers are a little off. Pass. Joris wants to throw across the middle. Middle, middle. Going for Shoot Brown, up. incomplete. But again, the defender is starting to edge outside toward Conrad, giving some open space in the middle of the field there to Brown from his slot back position, but just not able to make connection. Now bring up third down and about ten. Some personnel changing. T.J. Stevens in as Brown checks out. You think pass, but the sweep has been awful good. And here is the, the sweep. Side. Wilson cuts back. Cuts back. Has running room. Christopher Wilson, oh. first down. Number 21. He would have had a lot of room if he had got by. I may have called that a little quickly, but no, I believe he is very near the fist. It is a first down. first down. Wilson with 11 yards. And everybody thinking pass and you get that run. See, that's where Lance would have been proud of me for making that call. <laughs> Aaron sees checking into the ball game. Jones will come out for this play. We've not seen Cease a lot offensively in the last few games. He's the blocking back in the power eye. We'll toss for Wilson again. Cuts it back. Trying to get outside. Still on his feet. Gets a very high tackle from number four early. No flag. Pickup of about four yards. Fifteen carries now for 113 yards for Christopher Wilson, and good yardage on the sweep. Tremendous evening for Christopher.
some discussion Michael. in the backfield as they get lined up in the power eye. Uh, that didn't look well from the snap, but Wilson's going to cut back against traffic and get about three yards, three yards or something. That had disaster all over. Oh, that was it was going to be a sweep, of the, and I don't know what happened. I know enough about football to know that that's not the way you draw it up. Couple yards by Wilson. Still at third down and five. Eight minutes and 40 seconds remaining in this contest. Coach, 13 nothing. We'll toss to Jones. He'll cut up and be very near very another close. first down. This depends on a spot. And Adam Jones doing a lot of that on his own. He didn't, did not seem to have a lot of blockers downfield in front of him. We'll Should wait for the spot. Down. And if they give him a spot where it looks like the ball is, that is a first yes, down. First down. Spot's a very funny, <laughs> funny thing to watch. When well, sometimes that well, knee sometimes, hits the ground, yeah. you know, but we can't see, and sometimes it's just curious. Boy, it's just curious. Yes, sometimes it's way off any place close to what I'd think. But it is first down. But what has been a nice drive, you know, Dale. Remember, this drive started after the penalty at the Deep. two-yard Deep. line. Yeah. Seminoles are now at the 44 and eating some precious time off the clock. Wilson. Still fighting forward. He'll get three. Picks up an extra yard yards. there on twisting. Put the ball at the 48 yard line. Clock now becoming a factor. 7.43 left in the game. Now you hear the old cliche a lot of times you know, teams that come from behind and say, well, we just ran out of time. In the case of Seminoles, the last couple of weeks, you know, we've had that's too much time. Yeah. You know, the, we haven't run out of time soon enough. You know, as this drive continues and eat up some more time. Jones, Jones the second back, running room. First that's outside, down. he's got lots more. of room. Lots more. Adam Jones still on his still feet. Up. Still, still up. on his feet. What a run there. by Adam Jones and a late flag. We may have a late hit there. We're going to see what the call is as the officials are running back. We get two flags. We have two flags. One, one right back up field at the 40-yard line in Frontier Territory and another flag at the point of the tackle. The flag back at the 40 is probably a blocking violation and the official signaling to bring the play back. So a big chunk of this run by Adam Jones is not going to count. What a shame because that was a tremendous tremendous run by Jones. And we cannot see the signal there. 15 yards. But now we'll have to step off the penalty on Frontier. Personal foul, late hit. So it's not going to be complete disaster. It's going to go back to your 15, 15 one direction, 15 in the other direction. So what it's going Bring to amount to is line. about where the original flag was just inside the 40 to 38. We'll credit Jones with 15 yards on the run and a first down. And a first down, yes. 7-16. Each team getting 15 yards of penalty. But a first down, more importantly. And a big hole by Wilson, Wilson. once again. First down. Another first down. 12, 13 yards, I believe, Coach. And this, what we've talked about, is size advantage to Frontier, maybe conditioning and quick, quickness is starting to wear out a little bit, but 12 yards by Wilson, and that's first down. Christopher Wilson with a super evening so far. Ball now resting at the 27 yard line. First and 10, 650, clock running. And boy, one of the nicest drives the Seminoles have had all year as far as a time consuming drive. Gabe Gordon will get a carry and get probably about three, four yards. Just anything to keep him crossed up a little bit. Second down and seven.
Gordon with a couple early carries, but we've not seen a lot of him. It's been a lot of Jones and a lot of Wilson. A lot since. of Wilson, yes. Schauber replaces Smithberger along the offensive front. Christopher Wilson running nice long flag, flag oh, got a down. Flag. So flag what turned right in on it, I would say. Very near another first down is probably not going to count. All of a sudden, a game that had very few penalty flags, we've had a lot. Illegal block, illegal use of hands against the Seminoles. So the block that released Wilson for that extra yardage. And a 10-yard step off from the point, takes it back to the 30-yard line, second down, and about 11 o'clock. Look for the reverse here, Joe. Look for a reverse. Whatever way it comes, it's probably going the other way. And I won't take credit for this call. <laughs> Here's Conrad. Here Conrad. Oh, Jones. Jones will pick it up. And I wish I hadn't have told you that was coming. Yes. Lots and lots and lots of room there. We have uh, somebody on the... Player's going to lose six or seven yards, and a frontier player is down. Number 24 being helped off the field there. I think his name may be Kaiser. It's going to be third down and very long now after that bad exchange. So we haven't seen a pass. It might be the place for it. One advantage is having Coach Briggs tell me what place <laughs> is coming, but you know, sometimes you don't want to know when they're right. not like you hope for them to be. And it looked like that play was going to look so nice, and then they just flubbed the, the handoff. Third down in about 19. Wilson coming into the huddle late. Seminoles are going to be right around 200 yards rushing for this game, one of their better rushing games of the year. Brownie and Conrad wide on either side. George to throw. Pressure. Steps in there. Hits Kilburn. Gets a part of it back. Nine yards for Preston Kilburn. That cuts that to about half. It's going to bring up fourth and about nine or ten. Nice to get Preston back involved in the offensive flow yes, after he is. was forced to sit out last week. He's had some ankle and knee problems, and I'm sure still not you know, up anywhere near 100%. Clock running, 4 minutes, 50 seconds remaining in the game. Fourth down and nine. Toss in. Oh. Cut it back in. Maybe he shouldn't have. Get only a couple of yards, and... Frontier will, Frontier take, will over. take over, but more importantly, you know, a lot of time was taken off the clock. Yeah, you we're know, down to 4:35. Remember, you know, Frontier ran that play on the first play of the fourth quarter, so there would have been about 11:55 left. So they took seven minutes and maybe 7:20 off the clock. We see Christopher Wilson. You know, it looks like a cramp. We hope that's all. And, you know, after the hard work that he's had, you know, over 20 carries for the game, and hopefully nothing more than, than a cramp. Over 130 yards by my very unofficial count for Wilson tonight. As I started to say, there, you know, over seven minutes, close to seven minutes and 20 seconds taking off the clock there. So even though no points by the Seminoles, you know, a very nice eating up consuming yeah. drive and would have been better if not for about four penalties on the on that drive. And evening had been pretty well penalty free and uh, we kind of accumulated them there all at once. Still working on the cramp for Wilson. We, Doc Snyder. We saw just you know prior to that number 76 Robbie Lombatis checking into the game. 
Now see number 33, Jonathan Wilson, checking in. There was a 13-0 lead, you know, chance for Coach to get a, a few new players into the game here for this last 436. So right now, you know, concern still being with uh, with Christopher Wilson, Doc Snyder, and uh, student manager trainer Andrew McIntyre out there and tend to, to what we hope is just a cramp. there Christopher Wilson being carried off is uh, hopefully just the cramp that they need to do a little more work on well and what you like to see there too Dale you know hope the injury is not too serious but when they called over for a couple guys to come help out and stuff there's two seniors and Zach Fronapple and Daniel Smithberger were right there to help you know their sophomore teammate Christopher Wilson who they know has done a great job the Frontier taking over. They'll try a halfback pass. Carpenter going deep. He has a man. Deflected. Oh, deflected. Gordon and Conrad back on the intended receiver, Crosby. A nice throw by the halfback Carpenter, but well defended by Gabe Gordon and Adam Conrad. And a second and ten. And now Frontier starting to reach deep into that bag of tricks now with four and a half minutes left in this game. It's still 13-0. Also, we see Chris Yoho, a guest Thursday night on Coach's Corner, has checked in to replace Christopher Wilson as they continue to work on that cramp down below us. Schmidt to Pass throw to Carpenter. He's mad at the Gordon. Gabe Gordon and lost, Chris Yoho. But a good play there by Gordon. Came up and made a good open field tackle. I believe a loss of a batty. Well, they really didn't well, move, they the, didn't six, move so the six. No so. game. Looking to pass. Underneath. Hit immediately. Early catches the ball. Yoho was right there. A pickup of only about three yards. Fourth and ten, 347. Fourth down. No huddle for Frontier. Shotgun to Schmidt. Steps up to and the pressure. Sack. Randall Seifert. After the quarterback Schmidt had stepped away from Aaron Seif. And the Noles are going to get the ball here in good field And position. a nice job. The ball will be back about the 21-yard line. Loss of about six yards, but no central. Taking over, 334 left. Now just take care of it and run some clock. Joris will give to Jones. Jones. Jones a couple tackles. Gets a good five. I'd say closer to seven yards for Adam Jones on first down. Christopher Wilson on the sideline here, up on his feet. That's a good sign, but at this 13 nothing game, clock running here yes. three minutes, I, I'd say there's very little chance that we'll see Christopher back on the field. He sure has earned it tonight with 20 carries and somewhere close to 135 yards. Jones, Jones. cuts it back. Bouncing going to the outside, outside going, going to the end zone. zone. Touchdown. We have a flag. And a flag. And the penalty flags have started to fly the second half. And what looked like about a 13-yard run by Adam Jones is probably not going to count. And the second good Adam Jones run this tonight will be back, yes. called back. The flag coming clipping. in late. And it will be clipping. I know some of the people complaining about some of the calls, and I hear you know people. You, you have to remember, you know, this is an OVAC crew. 
Uh, I'm assuming they're out of the wheeling area, but Frontier would use all OVAC officials, uh, even though I do not recognize them. Spotted that foul down near the five yard line. They'll come back 15 yards, put it down at the 20. Two minutes and 50 seconds to go, coach. Penalties really starting to add up for Monroe Central. Line of scrimmage now the 20-yard line, second down and 10. We'll try Adam Jones, Jones again. again. Not much this time. Unable to get outside. Out of bounds with 2.45 on the clock. This may be as many blocking type penalties as I've seen in a game all year. No gain by Jones, third and ten. Interesting to see what kind of call Coach comes up with here with a 13-0 lead, third and ten. Whether he'll try you know, to go to the air to get that first down. The answer is no. Why do you Brown. need to when Eric Brown can bust through there and get about five or six of those yards? Maybe closer to seven, fourth and three. Clock continuing to run now. Seminoles will be able to take this down near two minutes remaining. George coming to the sideline to get the play. Now re-enters the huddle, as you see there. And if you could get the first down here, you could just about you just it. run out the rest of the time. Yeah. Should be able to mount it away. Unbalanced to the right. Power, Gordon. Gabe Gordon. And very hard to tell, but it looks like he got inside the 10, which would be a first down. Yes, first down signal. Just Three yards right by side. Gordon. Caught four yards to the nine. By my count, and a lot of times I forget to mark first downs, but I have us now for 20 first downs in this game, which is a credit to the ground game, which has done a great job, especially here in the second half and the fourth quarter in particular. 145 left. Give it to Brown. Brown Keep still on his feet. feet. Good effort inside the five near the four. Five yards by yep. Eric Brown. And we have an injured Cougar. That's number four again. We saw them down earlier, and I think even on a cool night that we're seeing conditioning becoming a, somewhat of a factor. Now, I know we had you know, somebody down in, in Christopher Wilson's case earlier with a cramp, but I don't think conditioning is a problem there. I think that's just a factor. You know, you know, as we look down here and see Christopher standing standing next to the coaches, and he looks fine now, even though I'm not sure he'll get back not in the sure game, he'll get in, but possibly defensively, him. and the dirty jersey, he's earned it tonight, as I said, with 20 carries and up around that 130-some yard mark. And that could be the problem there as uh, you know, as the Frontier coaches and Coach Morris, Coach Russ Morris, you know, get his troops to the far side. Looks like, again, number four uh, gingerly getting up. You know, as you see, Dale, as I look there in the shot that we had there of the, of the Seminoles over at the side, they're getting some water. You know what I like to see on a night like this with the field? You know, a little bear in the middle and those linemen. Michael George has a real white jersey on. Yes. And that's a credit that's to a that credit. offensive line because the Seminoles have thrown 16 passes. George has only been hit a couple of times and he scrambled a couple of times, but that jersey stayed nice and white. And the offensive line tonight has done a great job protecting him against and also opening holes for about two, better than 200 yards rushing by the Seminoles. Against the line for the Cougars that uh, has some size. Brown Apple, Kenny, Shoemaker, Smithberger, Seifert. We have seen Schauber, Kilburn, Jones. will walk Jones. into the end zone, and this one will count. Adam Jones, four-yard run, 19-0 Seminoles. Well-deserved touchdown for Jonesy as he's had two really nice runs called back. And you like to see that. You know, Adam, uh, uh, a couple of touchdowns earlier in the year, but you know, he earned it tonight. He's up over 80 yards rushing also, but as you say, a couple of runs that 
were called back one because of penalty. Was just super run. So Chris Joho out of an Adam Conrad hold. Kick is down. It is up. No good. No good. Wide right. The four was wide left. Failure to convert after extra points. The Seminoles now only three times after 14 touchdowns have converted this year. And that has been a big problem. But the good news is with 118 left in the game, Seminoles are going to get that elusive second win. And finally, the last and minute's going to be unimportant. Yes. 19 nothing. Coming at, at a super time too, Coach, because you know you're walking into a, a Bellsville game next week at Bellsville. And so, you know, nice momentum break for the uh, the Knowles. Go over there and, and let it all hang out. You know, got nothing to lose. Well, they've had to work hard tonight. You know, you, ideally at halftime you would think if we could have got a couple on the board and let some younger kids play. They'll have their opportunity Monday night in the last home JV game of the year. But, uh, you know, you know, good effort all the way around. And, you know, a win's a win. That's right. And it has been a very solid win you know, and a shutout. You know, you know that the, the, the Seminoles, you know, get the second win here and what will hopefully will remain a second shutout. Now, uh, I think it can be said that Frontier, in however many years we've played them, they've never won. Is that right? Has never and won. And it would, it, as long as Coach Sacasa has been here in his 30 years, I believe they've played Frontier. It's more than 25. But, uh, you know, Frontier team has never beaten a Monroe Central That's or That's a pretty amazing team. stat because Frontier's had some really nice teams. The longer you go by by never losing, the closer you get to winning. So it's going to happen someday. You know, unfortunately, not this day. Not this day. Jones will kick off again. And as you say, next week, you know, a chance to get over to Bellsville and see a couple of replays of that game. You know, your usual Saturday morning replay. Looks like the Cougars are going to try a cross-field pass. Now Schmidt will say no and be brought to the ground by Cease and others. So I was going to say, Dale, you know, that's a Channel 7 game, and I believe the replay will be on Saturday. Saturday. Saturday night at 11.30. Yes. So see the game live. See the game live. See the game, see Saturday, game Saturday morning. And then again Saturday, Saturday night. night. And both times, you know, you're going to have, uh, well, I'm not too sure who Channel 7 is going to send. That's unimportant, but we'll have our own Jeff Stevens. <laughs> I believe David Bloomquist. According to Scott Nolte last week, I think David Bloomquist was going to be out. We see Andy Crisman in the game now defensively at a corner. Also, Lombatis and Jonathan Wilson also. This will be a pass. They're going deep. Incomplete. The ball staying up intended for number 10, Crosby, and Conrad coming from his free safety position making Got the, the ball play. about the same time. But a pretty nice pass for a, a quarterback who doesn't do that too much. Now he threw the ball well. That's now 15 throws by Frontier, 4 of 15 passing. I'm not sure who the coverage was. I think maybe Gordon on that far side, but it was Conrad to come over and made the hit. Schauber also in defensively. Seminoles will rush 4 and drop 7. And 45, Crispin, Andy Crispin. Crispin a guest Thursday night with Lance and uh, Coach Sacosta. He'll be over here to the defensive left against Crosby. Second and 10, 104 left. Schmidt. Schmidt down. We've got flags everywhere. The quarterback slipped down. And it's going to be a holding call on Frontier. That was the bad that he threw two threw flags two at that one. <laughs> I was going to ask about that. Huh? The loss of seven yards will be declined. 57.7 seconds remaining in this contest. 19 to nothing. Yesterday was... You wouldn't tell us that, Dale. Yesterday no, no, was your birthday. No. My grandson asked me how old I was. I said 27 or 26. And he said which? And I said both. <laughs> so if you're a mathematician, you got it. <laughs> People taping that, they'll probably run that back to make yeah. sure they heard it right. Back to the 25-yard line. The penalty was declined. Clock running now with 50 seconds left. Third down and about 17. And a bad oh. snap will go through the hands of, the, of Schmidt. He'll get out of his own end zone. And have a little bit of room before being driven out of bounds on the far side. Wow, what an ugly snap. 
Number 88, seconds. Sam Miller making the play. Ball goes from the 25 back to the back to the 13, a loss of 12. Well, this time of year is always exciting. If you come into the Bellsville game, and no matter what, you know, the whole community gets involved, and it's an exciting time. We're really looking forward to it. Dan Miller, number 85, and Sam Miller, number 88, now at linebacker. Schmidt wants to throw again. Going back across the middle, incomplete. Oh. Sam Miller and Andy Christman. A couple of people that you'll see in the JV game on Monday night. We both had a hand on it. And we're going to have a... Uh, both upset they didn't get the interception. Yes. <laughs> a new offense coming in for uh, the Knowles. And a nice hand as we'll get some other players on the field here. Without a program, I'm sure we cannot identify all of them. And whether they will run a play or just take a knee, we'll see. I think you have to let these kids run a play. 19-0 yeah. with 25 seconds left. Ryan Burkhardt is the quarterback as he has come back from injury and has been, is now quarterback the last couple of JV games. In case people are not aware of it, Josh Ishii, you know, had a broken bone in his leg a, a couple weeks ago. As a matter of fact, he, he played with a broken bone for a couple weeks. Two, too many people in the field. Robbie Lombatis will now get off the field. Burkhart will hand to number 25, Ryan Ferguson. He will pick up some yardage, about three yards, and what will be the final play of the game. And it's been a lot more fun tonight, you know, as we go into that last few minutes than it has been the last couple weeks. Simmons running to the line, and the young kids They're are going to try to get snap. a playoff here. And they will. They will. Ferguson will Ferguson get another again. carry. No game, but that will be the ball game. And Monroe Central will get their second win of the year. And a very hard-fought 19-0 win. But a well-deserved win, Coach. You know, I mean, they've worked hard.